In this video, we're going to talk about troubleshooting a compressor, specifically for an air conditioning system, and we're going to talk about the electrical side, not the mechanical side. So why do we want to go through tr problems of troubleshooting and testing a compressor's electrical side? First, if the compressor does not run when the contactor pulls in and you have power. Second, the compressor attempts to start but doesn't. Third, a compressor starting trips a circuit breaker or blows a fuse. There is fifth or fourth, there has been a bad capacitor. You just need to check and make sure that there's no further damage. Five, you suspect there's been a power surge or a lightning strike. All of these are good reasons to check the compressor's electrical side. Before testing a compressor, you want to test all the capacitors, test the contactor, Test for proper power on the load side of the contactor when the system is running. If the outdoor fan is running when the system is supposed to be running and the compressor is not, you want to check the compressor. In other words, any time where the compressor is not operational where it should be, you want to test the compressor. Before doing any test procedures, turn the power off at the disconnector breaker. Lock it out. Tag it out. Okay, you want to make very sure that while your hands are in here testing the compressor, no one can turn that unit on on you. A lot of times you have your hands on the high voltage terminals or you're very near the outdoor fan blades and all of these can hurt you. So lock it out, tag it out. By that we mean make sure nobody can turn it on again. Prior to testing, know how the wires are connected to the compressor. If it's a, not a plug type connection, take a picture. Okay, in other words, you have to be able to reconnect this the way you found it when you're done testing it. Check and make sure the wiring as it is when you walk up to it, which is now, matches what is on the unit schematic. Don't ever trust the technician before you to have done things correctly. Okay, you have the plugs versus the individual wires. Okay, this is a plug type connection. Okay, it's very hard to mess this up and get it in the wrong spot. It just plugs on in a certain way. This is a wire type connection. Okay, you'll notice that one wire is not on this terminal connection, but again, it's very easy to get wires on the wrong spots. Also, sometimes the foam rubber that's around here with the label on it gets flipped around. Right now, this terminal up here, the black is common, red is run, start is not connected. But this terminal, this rubber thing that the terminal um, designations are on can get flipped around. So you want to be pretty careful about that. Look for rust and other damage in the terminal connections. Check for proper connections. Is it tight? Check for proper wiring. Is the start wire actually connected to the start terminal or is it someplace else? You want to check both sides of the connectors. In other words, check the side that goes to check the side that's on the um, comp compressor, so the terminals. Check what's connected to it. Make sure you look at both sides. So here's a situation where the plug actually looks pretty good on the compressor. But if you notice here, there is a lot of rust and everything building up. So there's moisture here. This unit has been wet. That's all stuff you want to notice because it makes a difference in future and what caused the problem as well. Here's another example. The connector has a lot of oil on it. Okay, so you see that there's oil on this connector. Well, there's a pin that's actually one of the pins has been has come loose on the compressor side don't have a cause for it right now but we know that a pin has pulled out but you'll also notice there isn't a lot of burning here so this is not a major electrical fault something caused this pin to fail but did not cause a fire and there was no major arc or anything like that Okay, again here we see some rust build up, but all my terminals actually look pretty good with the exception of rust. That's sort of what I'm looking for. Now you're going to use your meter and you're going to check for grounded windings. 
by what we mean in grounded windings. One of the windings inside has lost its insulation, is making contact with ground. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is isolate the compressor windings. You need to remove the wires either at the compressor terminal, if it's easier to do it there, or at the contactor. Okay, you need to isolate that compressor. You're going to connect one meter lead to one of the copper tubes coming out of the compressor. Make sure it's a good connection. Usually I use an alligator clip or something like that. Then you want to check from common to that ground, from start to that ground, and from run to that ground. All your readings should be well over 5 mega ohms, if not showing as an OL or open on your meter. You shouldn't have any continuity from any of the terminals to ground. So this is just an example picture. Notice one clamp, one alligator clip is on, a, is on the process tube coming out of the compressor. Okay, and one is connected to one of the terminals. So you're going to take this one and you're going to do each of the three terminals recording your readings. Okay, OL is not a grounded compressor. Okay, now in this case we have a ground. This is just a different compressor, but one alligator lead is there and one's on the terminal. We have a 2.0 ohms. That's a grounded compressor. Not much you can do in here. This is a replace the compressor. Or based on age, might have to replace the system. Regardless of what you find on your ground test, you need to check winding to winding. You're going to do start to run. You're going to do common to start. And you're going to do common to run. Now, watch these readings closely. Write them down. Common to start plus common to run should be equal or extremely close to the start to run for single phase systems. It's all of your residential and most of your light commercial. There should be no readings showing OL, which is open, or zero, which is zero. Okay, you should have valid numbers and there should be no OLs and it should add up. The start in to run, the start to run should equal the common to start plus the common to run. Your common to start is your great well, again, this is if you look here, start to run, common to start, common to run. Start to run will be my highest reading. Common to start will be my next highest. Common to run will be my lowest readings. Now that's again for single phase system. In other words, if you have a capacitor, this is your readings. For three phase systems found on commercial sites, there won't be any capacitor. You're going to do L1 to L2, L2 to L3, L3 to L1, and all of the readings should be identical. No reading should be OL or zero. Okay, Three phase systems do not have a start run in common. They should, with very few exceptions, these lead, these readings should all be identical. So you're, this is just showing a winding or winding. This is in a single phase system. So my start to run is 1.8. My common to start is 1.2. My common to run is 0.4. Now that's a little bit lower, but still, if I add up my 0.4, my 1.2, it's, it's a 0.2 difference from the 1.8. Okay, so it's a little bit off, but if everything else checks out okay, I'm going to accept that. But none of my readings are zero, and none of my readings are OL. Now, in this case, I have an OL showing up between two of my windings. See, I have one alligator clip on each of the on each terminal. My meter's reading OL. That's an open winding. Nothing you can do on this. Okay. The only thing you want to be careful of in this situation is make sure the compressor is not hot. If this compressor, if it had just been running and you get an OL and one of the terminals you're checking is the common, it might be in the internal overload. 
in this case it isn't. I happen to know that um, this compressor was cold and there was a problem with this unit. But again, oh well, if, there, if one of your pins is common, it might be an internal overload. So just make sure your compressor is cool. But you should not get an OL. So to wrap things up as you go through this, if there's any electrical faults found in the compressor, the compressor will need to be replaced. Since this is such a major expensive part, and it, it's a real problem to replace these, double check all of your readings. It's a good idea to take pictures. Before speaking with the customer, check the warranty on the compressor. It's usually 10 years for residential now for on quality equipment, could be five years for lower quality, and one year for commercial. Good option to give the customers a cost to replace just the compressor versus a cost to replace the system depending on age. If you do not find any electrical problems in the compressor and all other components such as the contactor, capacitor, pressure switches, and circuit boards are working properly, then you need to look for mechanical faults. If the compressor is shorted to ground, leaving, uh, leave the breaker or disconnect turned off for safety. Regardless of what you do, rewire all the components to their original spots. If the customer wants a second opinion, you want to make sure the tech that follows you, okay, sees something that you left neat and operational. Okay, you don't want anyone to come along after you and say, well, the guy before me broke it. Okay, so always take a little bit of pride in your work and leave it neat and operational, or at least wired properly, in case the customer wants a second opinion. If you don't, you have a chance of owning that problem. Now, on the nature of owning a problem, try to identify the cause. Compressors do not fail on their own 99.99% .99 of the time. Something caused that failure. Age is always a possibility, okay? Old 20-year-old compressors will break down. Average lifespan compressor, 10 to 15 years. Could there have been acid in the oil? Could there have been a problem with the other electrical components? A bad contactor, bad capacitors will cause a compressor to fail. Was there a possible power surge? This is pretty rare. Is there, was there a lightning hit? I could promise you, if there was a lightning hit, there was much more damage to that unit than just the compressor. It, was there a dirty evaporator coil, which would have caused liquid flood back? So that could be mechanical failure. Is there out, was there an outdoor fan motor failure? That would have caused the compressor to overheat and possibly caused acid to form in the oil. If the reason we want to identify the cause, if you do not find it, it could very possibly happen again. And if you've replaced just the compressor and it happens again, now you own the warranty. So it's always a good idea to find the cause of the compressor failure. If you find the cause, document it, take pictures, and so on. Okay. If you have an R22 compressor that needs to be replaced, most likely you're going to have to replace the condenser, the outdoor unit. If you replace the condenser on the outdoor unit, you're going to be forced to go to R410A. You cannot use an R410A air condenser on an older R22 air handler. So it could be an entire system replacement. Document everything because this is a pretty major expense for the customer. So I hope that helped with a little bit with compressor electrical troubleshooting. I'll try to get a video out in the near future with the mechanical side.